Good evening, I'm in with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Thursday, December 14th, 2017 at 11.44 p.m. Mountain Time. We're here at Null School. I'm going to show you how to work it. Come here, click Earth. Mode, Particulates. PM 2.5 micrometer and there's your fires so we're looking at the Thomas fire guys I did some research this is these are fires up in Alberta and British Columbia not in the Yukon and they are fires and this is a fire in Oregon that is supposedly out <laughs> But the Thomas Fire is the biggest fire, or the fourth biggest fire in history. Boom! And let's talk about it. Thomas Fire burned 242,500 acres, destroyed 751 structures, and is barely contained. The Thomas Fire in California is burning for 11 days now, 30% contained as of today, and it has burned a quarter of a million acres, making it the fourth largest fire in California's history. Its cause is still under investigation. Guys, the cause is the Pacific North American Oscillations, which we'll cover later in the science section of this video. There are now 8,100 firefighters battling the blaze to save 18,000 structures. Almost 800 are destroyed. I'm going to leave you amazing links to the ARCGIS.com website, U.S. Wildfire Activity Public Information Map. You can get live wildfire information. And we're just going to come up on the Thomas Fire, the fourth largest fire in history in California. And you can just zoom in on it. You can see the fire front. You can see where they're battling the blazes. And it is massive. Now, luckily... If you look into the radar here, this is a very unpopulated area. Probably a, a lot of wealthy people that own mountain property, and unfortunately, they really built in the wrong place. But this is a great resource for you to come and check out the fires real time as they move. The Rye Fire, the Creek Fire. Now, once it hits the Lilac Fire... All right, so that's a heads up. This is a great thing if you have loved ones out here and you're following it, you want to be using this resource. All 50 states have seen snow in two weeks ahead of Christmas. Now, for those of you that watch the channel that are not in the United States, winter does not start here until December 21st on the solstice. And these are two of the of very homely people, especially this fella. <laughs> and if you come down here Wednesday, December 13th, as of December 12th, 23.6% of the U.S. is covered in snow, but all 50 states have seen snow, including Florida, which is the usual outlier. And Florida's about to get snow again for the second time before winter in the U.S. See that grin on his face? He knows something. He knows what the satire TS is telling us. It's telling us that in the next three years, we are going to drop below total solar irradiance unseen in human history. Look, it keeps going. Boom. Goes away. That's where we're headed, folks. And the facts are in. Syracuse breaks snowfall record, and it wasn't even the snowiest spot in central New York. Heads up, Syracuse. Boom. More science coming. Snow and cold continue for the Midwest and Northeast before Christmas. The potent clipper system that moved through the Midwest yesterday is moving through the Northeast on Thursday morning. Snow is falling Thursday morning from Philly to New York and Southern Mass. Detroit set a daily record on Wednesday for snowfall of 6.3 inches. That's for you, Jimmy. Because of the snowfall and slick roads, the National Weather Service has issued weather advisories and winter storm warnings. Holla, Philly. Some already tired of snow in the Northeast. 
but experts advised you better get used to it. And that's because for the next 100 years, <laughs> we're going to be colder than it has since 1800. This is a very mild prediction, by the way. And I do not agree with it, but I agree we're getting cold. And you better not be tired of snow because Wednesday weather breaks snowfall record for Windsor and Essex just experienced the snowiest December 13th in years. Total snowfall of 15.6 centimeters breaks the previous record. Boom! Grand solar minimum much. City to look at snowfall removal policies after record snowfall this fall. That's a lot of falling in the fall. Are you falling for that global warming nonsense? This is coming out today. And this is for Fort St. John, British Columbia, where the fires are burning. <laughs> Nearly 160 centimeters of snow in October and November, which was the second highest amount of snow that has ever fallen. Ever. Forever and ever and never, never and ever. Fresh weather warning is issued for snow and ice. Scotland as temperatures set to plummet. <laughs> Video unavailable. God, it looks so gorgeous and snowy. Stunning winter views of no video available. Scotland is set for more freezing temperatures as cold winds continue to blast through the country. If you're there, you know it. How do you like them apples? The Met Office has issued a yellow ice warning as frost continues to cause hazards through tonight and Friday morning. Parts of Scotland will freeze as heavy snow showers of rain, hail, sleet, and snow alternate with their grand solar minimum nightmare. Gosh, that's, it's beautiful when we all starve to death, isn't it? You better be planting. Here's the weekly volcanic activity report. It's big because cosmic ray flux leads to increased muons heating the magma chambers in the subsurface. This is for silica-rich magma, the most explosive and deadly that cool the planet. And just as a precursor, Agung, Canelan, Kluchiskai, in Kamchatka, Pakaya, Shishaldin, Villarica, they're all throwing ash into the atmosphere. Let's talk about Canelon Watch. This is coming out tomorrow in eight minutes. That's how current we are. 1,217 quakes since yesterday, which is actually today, or tomorrow, which is now, because we're that current. Boom! That's how you do science. You don't even wait a day. You go get it tomorrow for today so that people can watch it the next day after now. Negros Canelon Volcano remains restive with 1,217 volcanic earthquakes recorded over the past 24 hours. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, Seismology said Friday. That's impossible. It's Thursday. I don't know how they said that tomorrow. This was 210 quakes more than the 1,007 recorded today, which is yesterday, according to them. Whew. Heads up. Geologists report new discoveries about Kansas and Oklahoma earthquakes. That's because their heads are finally popping. Um, they're, they're not popping out of, you know what they're, what's going on with their heads. They say that if you inject a whole heck of a lot of toxic materials into the ground, it builds pressure and causes earthquakes. Can you believe how smart these geologists are? God, you guys are smart. You know, that's funny. We knew about this in 1990. That's three decades ago, and now you're finding out about it. Ugh. Well, you can read the article because we have to get on. Sicily rocked by series of earthquakes. As experts say, more tremors possible. This is what I showed you yesterday, that amazing Mount Etna eruption in 1929. Here's Mount Etna. Here is the earthquake swarm. Here's earthquakes at Etna. Boom! That's a heads up 
from my homeboys in Sicily. That's where my genetics come from. Let's go right to the USGS map. And just like they said, how disgusting it is, look at this. Anthony, Kansas. And this is the information about Anthony, Kansas earthquakes. The recent earthquakes in Kansas that we just saw right now that make us all vomit because they're what they're injecting is saline radioactive water that is filled with heavy metals into the subsurface that will contaminate the deep aquifers forever. So if there ever is a super drought and we need to go look for water, that's the water we're going to find in Kansas. Thank you, oil and gas industry, you scumbags. Thank you, government, for allowing it. Boom! Loud explosion. We, we predicted this, guys. Shaking houses as meteorite hits Thunder Bay, Ontario. Now, these fireballs are only going to increase, I think, and the cosmic catastrophes are coming, and now they're hitting the ground, of all things. A loud explosion that shook houses in Ontario, Thunder Bay, Canada, late Wednesday, December 13th, 2017, appears to be caused by a meteorite that hit the ground near Highway 61, creating a 75-centimeter crater. Now, this is just a mini pebble, like dropping a penny off the inner... The uh, Empire State Building. <clears throat> More to come. Let's talk science. The Pacific North American Oscillation, I'll leave you links to this, is an alternating pattern between pressures in the Central Pacific and centers of action over Western Canada and the Southeastern United States. And it's very important as we descend into the Grand Solar Minimum. And the reason is, I'm going to leave you links to this full paper. If you guys know about ADAPT 2030, I'll leave you links to him down below. You have to subscribe. He's a, uh, we've known each other for years. We've been colleagues. We've been working on this since the beginning. He noticed the changes because he's a commodities trader in the Arabica bean in industry because they were losing coffee beans to cooling years ago. And here's the data. He shared today, mid-continental Native American population dynamics and late Holocene hydroclimate extremes. This is a repository of information. I have the whole full paper here for you guys linked. You, you can re It's going to take you weeks to go through this. Now, it has some amazing information coming out of Martin Lake, Indiana. Boom. This is science. This is how it works. And the Pacific North American oscillations are what we're seeing right now. They're causing the fires in California, and they're causing it to snow in Mexico at the same time. Now, this data set here, figure four, is what we're going to look at. It is amazing. And what it shows is the mid-continental Native American population dynamics and late Holocene hydroclimate extremes. And in layman's terms, what that shows is the Pacific North American oscillations. Now, guys, you've been following the channel. You know about the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. And you know about the Pacific decadal oscillation. They result in climate fluctuations. That's what's caused these many 60-year up and downs. But they also affect the climate during grand solar minimums like the Little Ice Age. And what this paper has is a data set from 500 AD to zero and back, including the Little Ice Age here between, let's say, 1800 to 1300 and the MCA. Now, if you come to our graph here, which I'll leave you with, these areas are lining up with the Greenland ice core. And even this double peak here is exactly visible in this graph. And it shows you in detail the Pacific, Arctic, the Gulf,
and you can glean a lot of information from what happens when we go into these grand minimums from this paper. Here are the Martin Lake data. You can also see it getting warm and cold and warm and even colder and warm and cold and warm and cold. That's the 206 year relational cycle that John Casey talks about. And it's part of the actual climate system that you live in. So get familiar with it. Because the same patterns we're seeing in right now with these huge troughs developing are the same patterns that are described in this paper. So for the next 50 years, at the minimum, we're going to be descending into a cold, very cold period, which is equivalent to the Dalton minimum. And this is coming from the most recent CMIP climate modeling, including the Satire TS data and the NRL SSI2. And you can see where we are in cycle 24 here. We're still several years from the bottom, which in total solar irradiance will eclipse anything since 1850. And according to the most accurate modern climate models, will bring us back to the Little Ice Age in three years. And that's a heads up. Boom. Smile. Comet 3200 Phaethon is not here yet. It's coming tomorrow. <coughs> and I'll leave you links to how to see it. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. The object that hit uh, Canada and the loud explosion in Ontario and Thunder Bay may be related to this object. And it's not here yet. And it's the mother of the Geminids. So there still could be activity over the next 48 hours. Objects hitting us, fireballs, and that's a heads up. Be safe.